For the initial steps, first is to identify the patient. This is to ensure that we have the right patient to prevent errors in giving medications. Explain the purpose of the respiratory system examination and answer any questions to the patient. Providing a clarity about the examinations, intent fosters patient understanding and cooperation. Perform hand hygiene. Practicing proper hand hygiene mitigates the transmission of pathogens, maintaining a sterile environment, and minimizing the risk of healthcare associated infections. Assist the patient to undress if needed and provide a patient gown. Assist the patient to a sitting position and expose the posterior thorax. Assisting the patient with appropriate attire and positioning ensures a comfort and facilitates optimal examination conditions, enabling thorough assessment of the respiratory system while respecting the patient's dignity and privacy. Assessing the thorax and lungs posterior. Inspect the posterior thorax, examine the skin, bones and muscles of the spine, shoulder blades, and back as well as the symmetry of expansion and accessory muscles used during respirations. Assessing the posterior thorax involves assessing the skin, bones, and muscle for abnormalities. Complications can arise from undetected issues such as dermatological conditions, skeletal deformities, muscle weakness, or respiratory problems. This leads to pain, restricted mobility, or respiratory distress. Early detection through thorough examination can help prevent complications and guide appropriate treatment. Assess the anterior posterior and lateral diameters of the thorax. Assessing thoracic diameters is vital for evaluating respiratory and cardiovascular health. It helps detect conditions like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD, restrictive lung diseases, cardiomegaly, and pericardial effusion. Understanding these dimensions guides treatment plans, monitors disease progression, and ensures timely intervention for optimal patient outcomes. Palpate over the spine and posterior thorax. Use the palmar surface of the hand to palpate for temperature, tenderness, muscle development, and masses. Instruct the patient to take a deep breath Assess for tactile frematus by using the ball of the hands to palpate over the posterior thorax and while the patient says 99. This is to assess for tenderness, muscle development, and masses, and it aids in identifying changes for lungs and airway obstruction. Assess the thoracic expansion by standing behind the patient, placing both thumbs on either side of the patient's spine at the level of T9 or T10. Ask the patient to take a deep breath and note movement of the examiner's hands. This is to provide insight into lung function and potential restrictions in respiratory movements. Percuss over the posterior and lateral lung field for tone using a zigzag pattern, starting from above the scapula to the basis of the lungs. Note intensity, pitch, duration, and quality of sound produced. It aims to assess the tone, pitch, duration, and quality of the lung sounds produced providing insights into lung health by detecting abnormalities like fluid accumulation or air trapping. Auscultate the lungs across and down the posterior thorax to the base of lungs as the patient breathes slowly and deeply through the mouth. Auscultating the lungs across and down the posterior thorax allows for comprehensive assessment of lung sounds aiding in the detection of abnormalities such as crackles, wheezes, or decreased breath sounds. Assessing the thorax and lungs anterior. Examine the anterior thorax. With the patient sitting, rearrange the gown so that the anterior chest is exposed. 
inspect the skin, bones, and muscles, as well as the symmetry of lung expansion and accessory muscle use. This is to check for symmetry of lung expansion and detecting respiratory issues. Palpate the anterior thorax. Palpate for tactile frematus as the patient repeats the word 99. This is done to detect abnormalities in lung tissue. Percuss over the anterior thorax. This is to assess for lung resonance and helps identify potential abnormalities. Auscultate the lungs through the anterior thorax as the patient breathes slowly and deeply through the mouth. This helps detect abnormal breath sounds. After the procedure, assess the patient in replacing the gown. This ensures the comfort and privacy while maintaining dignity. Perform hand hygiene. The purpose of this procedure is to avoid cross-contamination and the spread of microorganisms. And document the findings of the results of the assessment. This is to provide a continuity of care and for legal and ethical purposes. The purpose of assessing the thorax and lungs is to evaluate the respiratory system's health and function. These assessments help identify any abnormalities such as respiratory infection, breathing difficulties, or underlying lung diseases. Assessing the thorax and lungs is crucial for monitoring the effectiveness of interventions, such as oxygen therapy or respiratory treatments, and for providing appropriate care to patients with respiratory issues.